when I first started, I really didn't think it would be such a big deal that I'm a black woman, you know? I noticed that I had to work 10 times more harder to actually be as good as my counterparts. Welcome back to African Tea. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're continuing the Women's Month series. And for this series, I will be talking to a number of women that I really admire and discussing with them their passions and learning more about their folder in and stuff like that. So today I'll be talking to Katleho C.L. Tyler of KCL Arts and we will be discussing her art as a fine art African student studying in Spain, Barcelona and just hearing about her experience as a black woman in a predominantly white male field and just like the future of the arts and everything arts related. Please enjoy this video and yeah. So you are an artist, um, a fine artist and mm -hmm. you have a, what is it, a platform called KCL Arts. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then, yeah, so you're just like a very talented artist who mm -hmm. grew up in Botswana and now is studying in Spain, mm -hmm. Barcelona. So how would you introduce yourself? Hmm, interesting. Um, I'm a fine artist, an artist by heart. I... I'm very much focused on portraying and narrating stories that affect both the African diaspora mm -hmm. and my own personal experiences as well. Yeah, so I first started off at the Swedish Academy of Real Estate for about six months. Then I swapped schools to here. And yeah, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> to say the least, a lot of hiccups, a lot of a ton of hiccups that I I don't really talk about, but all with the all with the struggle. Yeah. Hey, well, I watched your interview with um some other Putana YouTuber, and then Karata, Karata, yeah, Karata, yeah. and then you said that you started your art journey by accident. Can you share them about that? <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was from one, I was admitted at the Bonington Junior Secondary School. So normally you have uh, optional subjects that you pick, that you attend maybe three lessons a week. So initially I wanted to do HE and French, and um, <laughs> that's not what the universe had in store for me. And then... I accidentally, accidentally meaning I was, I was talking a lot with my friends. So I didn't really grasp how to pick <laughs> which subjects I wanted to do. So I just picked whichever way. And I was like, you know what? I'll just have to deal with what I'm so. And then I ended up with art and commerce, two of the subjects that really groomed me into what I'm doing, which is both business and art, two of my biggest passions. So yeah, it's been interesting. Yeah. From yeah. there, I won the best in art prize for my whole mm -hmm. time at Bonington. Then yeah. senior secondary school, <laughs> I didn't. It was a bit. It was a bit difficult. Yeah. But yeah, took a gap year, moved on to Sweden, and now I'm here. Okay. How old are you when you went to Sweden? I was eighteen. 18. I was 18, yeah. Okay. And how did that come about? Did you apply or did you find a sponsor? Or <laughs> well, um, so we were waiting for our results, we meaning my mom and I. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for my senior secondary results, you know, Cambridge. And my mom was like, don't you think that is something that you'd want to go into? I was a bit hesitant on it because, you know, like the common stereotype is that there's no money in that you know so I was like if I was to go into it mm -hmm. I would just want to test out the waters first mm -hmm. so what I decided on is taking a gap year then going to Sweden my mom was paying for everything she still is I'm not 
sponsored. I just have to put this out there because I keep getting asked. I'm not <laughs> sponsored by anyone. I wish. But <laughs> my mom is, I'm blessed with such an incredible power force. My mom, she supports me in so many ways that I cannot even begin to describe. So, um, yeah. I went to Sweden to get gap year. It was it was pretty difficult because I was super super young and I'm a very introverted person and I was really shy back then. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, I think so, you're extroverted. <laughs> <laughs> not even. Not even. I think maybe it's because you see from Instagram and I'm much more open there. But in person, like even someone brought it up at school was like, "Do you have an alter ego?" Because online you seem like this very, you know, yeah. extroverted. How far is that in person? I'm very, very shy and <laughs> introverted. So yeah, yeah, it was a bit hard with you. But going on, but I, I managed. Okay. I managed. So I think now we can just get into the topics that we wanted to discuss. Mm-hmm. And then the first one was balancing personal life with a career. So you can just get into it. <laughs> Oh my God. I think because I've started, I started at at a pretty young age, Mm -hmm. I had to miss out on a ton of stuff that, you know, normal, normal young adults go through. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it hasn't been the most nicest experience (laughs) because I've lost a ton of friends. And I think that's, that's really necessary, especially when you're living in your truth. We mm-hmm. tend to share off people that no longer serve that purpose. Mm-hmm. It is painful, yes, but it's a, it's a, it's a necessary part of it all. Mm-hmm. So in terms of balancing it, I I tend to, I still haven't figured how how to balance it. To be quite honest, I tend to give so much of myself to my craft that mm-hmm. I don't even have time to socialize or actually talk to my friends it's yeah. something that i'm trying to work on as of now yeah <laughs> it's something that i'm trying to work on yeah but yeah i think giving yourself time as well to just relax mm-hmm. and understand that you don't always have to be working 24 7 is very very important because yeah. if you work at such an insane rate, you burn yourself out. And this happened to me a few, I think it was a month ago. I got really sick because I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. I had to go to like the doctor and everything. So when that happened, I just literally took a step back and I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I need to relax. Mm-hmm. Now I have weekends. Normally I didn't have weekends to just do my own stuff. I would also work during the weekends, you know, go landscape and do the mm-hmm. but now I'm trying to kind of take a step back mm-hmm. and notice that things come in seasons, you know? Yeah. I feel like that's something that you work on as you grow. Because even yeah. all established figures always on interviews say that, oh, I still find it difficult to balance between my career and personal life. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's something you work on as you uh, improve. And then... Yeah. You mentioned friends like that as you um, grow in your journey, you have to like shed off some friends that like aren't good for you. So what's your criteria for like choosing friends? Like how, what qualities do you look for in friends? Well, for one, you have to be what you're trying to attract. Okay. You have to truly be living in your truth and vibrating at such a higher level that you only can attract people of the same caliber, if not the same, higher. Mm-hmm. That's something that I learned as well, is that if you look for a, can I speak Sitsana? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> if you look for a, you are, you are not really, I'm not politically you, you are not going to attract people that are meant to be your in your journey. You are always going to attract people that are, want to draw you back or keep you in the same position. Mm-hmm. So for me, I don't really have a criteria okay. on people. I, okay, you have to be this, you have to be this. No, I don't. Too. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you can learn from a lot of people, mm-hmm. whether that draw you or, or on the same level or higher. 
but you also have to have the discipline to kind of limit the amount of time you give to these people and also knowing which role they play in your life mm -hmm. it's very important mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i think <laughs> okay so the next topic was um what's a dream without doubts and fears and how to live with it mm -hmm. okay so yeah <laughs> you can start doubts doubts and fears I don't think this is something that you can ever get over. Yeah. With every level you're going to progress to higher and higher, there are always going to be doubts yeah. and fears. And sometimes they can be bigger as you progress. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn how to live through it and mm -hmm. work through them, mm -hmm. not allowing them to stifle you or paralyze you in any way. Mm -hmm. And understanding where these come from, because at times, these doubts are a trauma response to something that you haven't tackled yet in your life or something that you have overlooked for a really long time. So kind of also breaking down, okay, where does this doubt come from? It can help you solve a whole lot of other problems that you have because I feel as though if you have an unresolved trauma experience, it manifests into doubts, into fears, into procrastination, into wanting to perfect everything and that's all one collective thing so if you tackle the root of it all you can you can progress better so i think they're very helpful in a way to get an mm -hmm. insight of where you are in life mm -hmm. and also for you to be able to fix <laughs> fix things that you overlooked yeah yeah oh, i'm learning so much because i never thought about that like doubts oh. and fears stem from like traumatic experiences mm -hmm. and just inner things that you have to deal with in other mm -hmm. areas of your life because like Definitely. that's something i i think everyone constantly faces when pursuing their dream they're always like mm -hmm. oh, am i good enough like is exactly. this gonna go anywhere or am i just wasting my time exactly so, yeah. and how do you deal with that is it through therapy or just talking to people or like how do you deal with that well, I journal a lot. I write a lot of my thoughts down. It's either that or I talk to myself. Because <laughs> that's like, sometimes you don't really need, you just need to just let it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, and also asking for help when I'm in dire need of it. Mm -hmm. It's either from my mom or just a really trusted person that you can always count on. Mm -hmm. You know, not sharing with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's not a good thing. Yeah. That's not a good thing. People can, people can be really conniving and these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So journaling and also checking it out with my mom mm -hmm. or a couple, like one of my friends, that mm -hmm. has helped a ton, a ton, a ton. So, also, um, oh, okay, continue. Yeah, meditating as well. I think meditation um, is one of the things that it's all, oh, it's so overlooked. And it's kind of cliche, oh, I meditate. <laughs> it's really, really helpful because you, you get more control over your thoughts and mm -hmm. you grasp better the concept of mindfulness and also mm -hmm. thinking before you react to things. Okay. And, and, and if you don't mind sharing, what are some of the doubts and fears you first experienced okay. and some of the doubts and fears you experience now? Well, I think not being good enough, I think that's one thing I have struggled with my whole life, yeah. even from uh, a young age. So what I used to, how I respond is work, 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 work. And of course, I would achieve the things that I want. Mm -hmm. I was an overachiever when I was young. I still am. So I think the fear of just not being good enough or just failing i really hate failing yeah i really hate it um so whenever i start something if anything i never ever want to fail and sometimes you have to fail in order to learn yeah. so that's something <laughs> that's something i'm still i'm still trying to yeah. work through you know my fear of failure and not being good enough mm -hmm. and also just like am i even gonna make it as an artist or is this is this just the dream i'm just selling myself yeah i think it's the same for me like my biggest fears are like not being good enough 
and just like failing in life mm-hmm. for me i'm just like if i can at least live a comfortable life in like Exactly. I don't know cuz I don't like depending on people so much cuz exactly. I think like I'm burdening them. So like hey. for me it's like at least if I can support myself I'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that independence. Yeah. Sorry? That independence is quite Yeah, important. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just that not being good enough and feel failure. But like yeah, those are like my two biggest fears. Mm-hmm. So every time I try to jump them up, I'll be like, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And just like try to work harder, just like you mm-hmm. said, and just like find a way to prove myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, and also, and also knowing that it's already yours, I think that helps a ton. Mm-hmm. Knowing what you want is not really as far as you think it is. Mm-hmm. You know, because even talking to a bunch of people at school that have really made it in the, you know, art industry, is that they, they'll be like, okay, it's normal to have these doubts, but you have to actually believe that you're going to make it because if you don't have that faith, faith is such an important thing. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Pasitana Kumalo also stated mm-hmm. in her biography as well that the one thing that kept her through tough times was faith mm-hmm. faith in herself faith in god and just actually believing that it's already mine this is mm-hmm. just the hurdle that will propel me and it's here to just teach me something yeah that's very yeah. important understanding mm-hmm. that what's meant for you is for you and it will exactly. always come your way like um, yeah and for your life will always prevail just believe and just yeah just like ignore the doubts just like yeah exactly yeah if you focus <laughs> on the dream of course there'll be doubts but like at least you're focusing on the dream and moving forward in some way mm-hmm. yeah the next topic is microaggressions um you faced as a mm-hmm. young black woman in a predominantly white male field yeah so yeah. tell us about it <laughs> oh where do i even begin when i first started I really didn't think it would be such a big deal that I'm a black woman, you know? Mm-hmm. I really didn't, I, I didn't think so. I, I, I know it's kind of ing- ignorant of me to feel as though, hey, racism has ended, but I was pretty young. Mm-hmm. So when I first got to Sweden, I was like, hmm, you know, some of the things that were done, it just didn't seem right to me. Mm-hmm. I can't really disclose some of that information because I'm not trying to kind of cause a negative heaven between I and the other school, especially now that I'm still a student. But there was just some, the treatment was definitely different. Mm-hmm. You know, there were, I, as a, I found, <laughs> how can I, I noticed that I had to work 10 times more harder to actually prove that I'm as good as my counterparts. Mm-hmm. You know, even now, I would get comments like, oh, wow, I didn't really think that you were actually good. Oh, oh, wow, you're actually smarter than I thought you were. Oh, you know, those kind of, yeah. those kind of things. It's really annoying, but mm. I've learned how to mute it in a way and kind of also standing up for myself, mm-hmm. especially now. Mm. When I was in Sweden, it was so hard for me to stand up for myself because it was the first time I ever encountered this. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. What are you saying? Like, it's freaking 2019 and you're, you're still thinking like that. Mm. But, you know, here, here it's definitely different. Even mm-hmm. the treatment are not as racist <laughs> as yeah. in the Sweden. So I don't have that much of a struggle. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think in where you are now is less um, racist than the previous school? I don't know. Sometimes I felt as though in Sweden they have never interacted with a black person before. It was so weird. Like it was so yeah. it, it's like the the treatment, even the stereotypes or just the things that they say. It's stuff that they catch from the the media, not what's actually happening. Yeah. As complex to here, you can actually tell that these people have interacted. And plus, Spain is pretty in the south of Europe. So mm. I think maybe that's why. And yeah. it's such a diverse group of people here. Mm-hmm. You know, 
in Sweden, I was I was the only black student in school. <laughs> you know, yeah. even in the town I was in, there was not many black people. You could say, okay, I see you, yes, really. I yeah. see you. See you gonna say. But here, it's such a diverse group of people, so people are more open, and people don't get that knowledge of black people, of mm-hmm. what they see on TV, but mm-hmm. of what they talk with someone, you know, interact, mm-hmm. and get to really know someone for who they are. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was in Sweden, this other student was like, his father came to school and mm-hmm. I was in some room. I was like, oh, this is Kate. I went by the name Kate. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. I was like, you, can, you can already imagine that. Yeah. You know, I just <laughs> go through that whole, you know, oh, what does your name mean? I don't yeah. want to go to it. Oh, yes. Kate. And he was like, you know, she was a minority when she came here. But once I got to know her, she's actually kind of, you know, those kind of statements, you know? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, that's ridiculous. How can yeah, you even cause a person, like, I don't get it because it's just a person. Like I don't get what the exactly. big deal is. What's what's confusing them so much? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think from from my experience in Sweden, it showed me how much how powerful the media really is. You know how mm. powerful our depiction really is in the media because. I'm sure when I lay, I don't know, maybe in other parts of the world, there are not really many black people. So mm. people just pick up from what they see on TV and say, okay, they're all like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Especially because yeah. I'm from Africa. Mm. So people already have this conceived idea of Africa, this starving continent, the poor kids, mm. flies everywhere. And it's not even like that. That one fly that's always on the nose. <laughs> And the thing is, they would pick the worst possible places to represent us. But when you come to Europe, there are places like that here. Exactly. As well. Every, country, exactly. every country in the world has exactly. that one place. Hey, <sighs> and they would never show them because why? They benefit from mm. Africa being depicted as such a poor country. So that in, in a, it always seems like Europe is the savior country. They came to save us. Oh, wow. If it's so, so poor, beautiful. if Africa is so poor, why did they come fight over our land? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Why are we still supplying yeah. the minerals to like the biggest, the richest countries now? Why is that? Mm. Mm. You know? Like if, if once Africa gets like a hold of the minerals and like just finds a way to manage them, like I don't, and like, the world's in trouble because like hey. us just alone can do so much yeah i think once we truly even us as africans mm-hmm. we truly deviate from that colonized mindset mm. that's when things are actually gonna change because if you look at in Botswana, we don't really own 100 percent of the earnings from our diamonds you know yeah. and this applies to most countries mm-hmm. in africa you know, we are still under control. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely about like um unlearning a lot of the things that we were taught while we were colonized, just like mm-hmm. undoing all that brainwashing. Exactly. And, yeah. But I feel like slowly but surely we're like getting there. Getting there. Cause, okay. Yeah. Because like we're now seeing that okay, a lot of the things that we thought were the norm are actually very wrong. Mm-hmm. We're working towards like learning new mindsets and like teaching um, our peers and like younger generations that okay, so this is like for example with your name, mm-hmm. you now know that well if you have like a big African name, you need to like correct mm-hmm. them and say yeah, not no, it's not that's the reason why my mom gave me this name not for you to exactly. come like yeah, you know. And then also I was saying, um, you were right about representation really um, being important because like places where, like you said, places where there aren't many black people, they can see, okay, Mm -hmm. black people are just normal people like anyone else, maybe even more talented. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So like they can see that in the media. So when they finally meet a black person, they're not like touching their hair or like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, Exactly. Yeah. But, like, um, the representation also slowly is coming. 
because like mm-hmm. it, there was blood and water which is a south african series that just shows us living like normal teenagers just doing exactly stuff. yeah not wakanda <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah but i guess wakanda was good too but like people need to understand that it's fictional it's not real yeah it's yeah. not real you yeah. know yeah but are there um, any shows that you like that you feel like represent us as black people or african in the world well i don't watch a lot of tv oh okay that's fine <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch tv a lot but okay. blood and water was i, I loved that show yeah insecure as well one of my favorite shows i love because it shows a black woman experience like in actual fact you know the things that you go through it also portrays as a normal woman you know mm-hmm. and, and the, the stuff she faces is also like, so good yeah 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 it's, it's like beautiful the and also likes, the music like, choice yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. even the music choice is so yeah, so so nice <laughs> yeah. okay so how do you think we can change that like the microaggressions within the art field like is there a way to get people to like um yeah just to change that well in the art community i think we need to see especially in ateliers mm-hmm. classical schools we need to see more models of color mm-hmm. You know, because I didn't, even now we have our first black model at school. It's mm-hmm. a really, I really, really love that because it shows me that they actually care. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to go to school to just learn how to paint a, a white person. Mm-hmm. I also want to learn how to paint black people as well. And this mm-hmm. is a problem across most ateliers in the world is that there's not much representation in terms of models. So people don't really know how to mix skin tones of a dark person. Yeah. Even even in other schools as well like maybe for photography a friend of mine to where I came she was like you know this is a problem we face as well we're not really taught how to shine you know how to light a black person because yeah. it's definitely different you know our like the tone is very very different mm-hmm. and you have to have a really well versed knowledge on that in order mm-hmm. to this is why You remember that cover I forgot the athlete that was really sh- on vogue yeah and the photographer didn't really photograph that person well. oh i think i heard about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know things like that these mm-hmm. are things that is because in schools like in a photography school or in an art school we're not really taught how to mm-hmm. like these people because we're being the information and the courses being based from such an earlier colonial you know rule mm-hmm. you know i think that really needs to change and also yeah. even me as a black artist i have to depict my people in a normal way as well mm-hmm. not it doesn't have to be always about colonialism and slavery you can also mm-hmm. depict black people as normal people you know going through normal stuff yeah. you know there is so much more to the black experience than my pain you know than mm-hmm. our pain there's so much more to it and that's something that i really want us to shed light with <laughs> okay yeah that's all thank you so much for oh thank you can it I, was can great I think- finally meeting you i was always admiring you on your like the content you posted i was like wow she's so she's so smart and like i don't know yeah <laughs> and so why oh. so it's great to finally talk to you Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you thought of some of the topics that we discussed and let me know what you thought of this video and if you have any suggestions for the next episodes. Please look forward to the next episode soon. Um bye.